So I'm in LibreOffice Base and I've connected to my database in Postgres SQL. And we can see the Dunsmuir schema. And this came about because of the forward engineering process I applied earlier. And we can see the tables in the schema. Again, there were four tables on our diagram. Uh, plots, plants, plant types, and gardeners. And one we didn't quite see, but I showed you how you could sort of uh, get to it. And this is that bridge entity or intermediate table that maps out the many-to-many -many relationship. There is another view in base uh, called relationships. And it will try to show you how the tables are related in your database. So if I go down here, and this is Dunsmuir uh, Gardener, uh, and that has a one-to-many relationship with plots. And plant types, if I just move it over, has a one-to-many relationship with plants. And then we have this one table that has two columns acting as a primary key, the intermediate table, uh, that although on the diagram was hidden from us, is in the database, because uh, there is that is the only way to resolve it in a relational database management system, is to have this intermediate table. So then the question becomes, well, I want to put data in here. Uh, where do I start? And because it's uh, a relational database which requires every table to have a primary key uh, and referential integrity is in force because uh, we do want data consistency and data integrity there is a method uh, to loading these tables and we have to work from the outside in so gardeners on the outside and plant types on the outside all these other tables that are sort of in between and there's one table that's actually uh, right in the middle and that's this many-to-many -many table. And we actually have to load that last. So we can choose either gardeners or plant types to be the first and then the other has to be the second. Uh, and then as we move in we can fill those. So we can't fill plots until gardener is filled in because plots is going to look to the gardeners table to see uh, is there a gardener with that ID in the gardeners table. And the same for plant types. It's We can't put plant into this table unless there's a plant type ID that already exists in the plant types table. So we have to load them first. And then because this table looks at both of these, we have to have those loaded. And then we can't have these two loaded until we have these two outside ones loaded. So we have to work from the outside uh, of our model towards the center. And that way we'll be able to get data loaded uh, with a little bit less frustration. So I'm just going to click on save and close this. So we have to load gardeners first or plant types. And once they're loaded, it would be safe to load plots and plants. But many plots has many plants has to be loaded last. Now I have some data um, out in CSV files that I can uh, put into these tables. I'll show you quickly that, yeah, there's nothing in there. Uh, no magic uh, or uh, nothing under my sleeves. A file open it's remembered where it was and I'll get my gardeners table remember comma separate it and I'll go OK and I'll just uh, bring this over highlight these two simple gardener ID with the name I'll just copy that right click on here paste use the first line as column names go next make sure it's gardener ID into ID and name and a name and then go create I can double check if I'm worried the data got in, so that's great. Now I could uh, load plots at this point because plots looks at gardeners, but I'm going to stick with loading all my outside tables first. So I'm going to do plant types next. So file, open, and we have uh, plant types. And again, I'll bring it in. Slide this over onto the screen so you can see it. Highlight it, edit copy, right click on the plant types, and paste that in. Use the first line as a column names, make sure they're lined up, ID to ID, name to name, create, done. So I'm not getting any errors, so it should be happy. Now it's safe to sort of move into the next level, which would be plants and plots. So I'll get those loaded, I'll do plots next, file, open, and I will get plots. And I will uh, bring that in, and I'll go OK. 
when we were making the table we just had plot ID section and number and guard the column gardener ID got added on for us so we'll go OK and that has the link into uh, these numbers have to match these numbers for gardener ID have to match the numbers already in the gardeners table so I'm just going to highlight this data edit copy and paste that onto plots Again, check first line as column names. Next, make sure plot IDs in the plot ID section. Section number going to the number, gardener ID and the gardener ID looks all looks good. Go create. No errors, no news is good news. So now I'll load plants file open. And I have some plants. And again, I'll bring this in. Slide this over. Again, uh, these IDs are just sort of sequential and these are just plant names but these IDs have to match one of the existing IDs in the plant type table so I'll bring so those IDs uh, sort of have to match the ones in that other table so I'll go back to that calc table the plants table actually the plants table And so this number, type ID 5, matches to this 5 that says vegetable. So I'm just going to highlight these and copy them. And then basically go to the plants table, paste it on like we did before, use the first line as columns, just double check that ID goes in the ID, name and the name, and plant type IDs, plant type ID, and go create. Now because I'm not getting the errors, that means everything's matching so far. Um, and the last table to load is the plots has many plants table. Now these tables are always kind of, I find them funny because if anyone ever looked at them, they'd have no idea what was going on because they're just uh, a series of numbers on each side. So file, open, and I'll get the uh, plants plots data. And I'll just go OK to that. And there it is on the screen. And so this has to match to an existing plot ID, and this has to match to an existing plant ID. If we don't get to, and that's, so that's two checks. If either fails, then the row won't be loaded into the database, or into that particular table in the database. So I'll edit, and I'll copy that. And I'll right-click on this table, and paste it in. Use first row as column names. Just make sure plot to plot, plant to plant, and that everything lines up. Now, because that data went in, went in without errors, that means there has to be a matching plot. So I'll bring up uh, plots. There's plots. Um, and I'll also bring up plant types. So it's really important that uh, when you're, if you want to use this technique that I'm using, that your data basically lines up properly. Because uh, let's take this row here. When this row tries to get inserted, it has to go to the uh, plot table and find is there a four. So that's the, f the first part of the check. And then it has to go to the plant table and see is there a five. And it'll go over here and go, okay, there is a five. Then that row can then be added to that table. And that's what referential integrity does. I just wanted to show you. Uh, how you can copy paste your data into your model uh, using base to get the data in there quickly. This concludes this video.